What is up, friends? Welcome to another episode of Into the Necrosphere. My first for 2022. I hope that your year has gotten off to a swimming start, and if it hasn't, never fear, because your favorite extreme metal, uh, geopolitical, shit-talking podcast is back, and I'm coming out hot out of the gates with Kelly T of the Slave to the Underground podcast, joining me to talk about my favorite records of 2021. We counted down Kelly's favorite uh, 10 records of the year, and we counted down my numbers. 2211. Uh, so uh, expect a lot of banter, uh, some good music, and uh, some uh, lively debate. Uh, that's coming your way in just a second. Before we get to that, however, if you tuned into the Into the Necrosphere Christmas Extravaganza, which featured myself, Marco of Stellar Master Elite, uh, and Evan of Quell, you will know that there's a new Quell record that has just dropped called The Cult is Dead. Um, and it features uh, Marco on backing vocals on one of the tracks, and it also features yours truly in what some have called the gr closest thing to satanic angel song that they have ever heard across 10 seconds of recorded music uh, i am going to play the song in which uh, evan was uh, very kind or very kindly invited me to uh, provide backing vocals on i will say this uh, it is an absolutely superb record of uh, you know and I'm, and I'm trying my best to be as uh, objective as i possibly can i think you guys can kind of uh, you know hopefully trust me on this one because i became friends with evan through his band um i really like what he does um, and i think he has excelled himself on this album so do go ahead and check it out on bandcamp um for a taste of what's on offer this is reaped by the scythe Space. 
That was Reaped by the Scythe by Quell off the new record, The Cult is Dead. And if you listened at around the uh, 3 minute 30 mark, uh, you will hear two lines uh, where I screamed my heart out, uh, wrecked my voice, frightened the dog, um, and had a lot of fun uh, doing so. But uh, yeah, great, uh, great honor to be asked by uh, Evan to feature on the record. Um, and uh, if you like that song, there is plenty more on offer on that album. So do go ahead on uh, Bandcamp, check it out. Uh, it's available on um, all the streaming platforms as well. I saw on Cobuzz that there's even a high a higher res version that's out, um, which I strongly approve of. Um, and I know that he's going to do CD and vinyl at some point as well. So if you're uh, into physical copies of stuff, uh, there's going to be plenty of that on offer as well. Just keep following him on the socials. Also, follow Into the Necrosphere on the socials if you're not doing so already. I'm on Instagram, uh, Facebook, and Twitter. If you follow me on the socials, you would have seen that I announced last week that uh, one of my big wish list episodes has finally happened. Uh, last week, I recorded a fucking kick-ass interview with Shane Embry of uh, Napalm Death, Dark Sky Burial, Brujeria, Lockup, Venomous Concept, and a whole host of other bands. Uh, that was one that I'd been angling for for literally years, so uh, to have him on the podcast was awesome. Uh, like I said, next week I've got Mike from Tombs uh, with me to finish up my countdown of my favorite records of 2021. Um, and then I've got one other big one in the pipeline. Uh, it's due to be recorded on the 26th of January. I uh, Because I I'm a, um, a superstitious fool. I won't mention anything just yet, but uh, I will announce it once it's happened. Uh, and there's a lot more uh, in the pipeline. So uh, lots of great things happening on the podcast. If you're not a subscriber yet, smash the subscribe button right now on uh, YouTube, Spotify, uh, Stitcher. Uh, I'm now on Amazon Music as well, on Apple Podcasts. Wherever you listen to podcasts, uh, the show will feature. And if it doesn't, then uh, your streaming platform of choice is a load of shit. Uh, also, stick around after my conversation with Kelly because I couldn't possibly stay away from you guys for a month and then not come back with uh, a bit of a news rant so I'll be including that um, and uh, yeah who knows who knows where that'll lead uh, for now sit back relax uh, pour yourself a beer pour yourself a coffee whatever it is you're doing um, uh, pay a close attention because we're about to tell you our favorite albums of 2021 Jackie. Greetings, ma'am. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, no, I'm all right. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> I was about to say, oh so there was a, uh, there was a, a, a <laughs> getting ready at pace. Can you just give me two seconds? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry, Jackie. No, no, no problem at all. Hopefully um, the lighting and everything's okay. Yeah, yeah, no, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. And are you... Uh, Remind me again, are you based out of the prison colony of Melbourne? No. <laughs> so you, 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 you got out of that, uh, that enclave of, uh, of far leftism. Oh, I don't know. Like we just had a, um, I, I went to rant on my Instagram story just before because we just, we've had all our shows shut down and we can't do any kind of, you know, festivals or concerts, like the amount of concerts I've had to cancel that I've put together and then the there's a church cult group here called the Hillsong group mm -hmm. yeah, yeah and literally two nights ago they had a youth festival there would have been hundreds of people no masks no social distancing uh, but they are Jesus to protect them so they have that, Jesus uh, to protect negates, them negates your argument right there <laughs> exactly so I'm just going to put a festival on and call it uh I don't know the festival of satan or something that's that's um you should put it put, put, religious... it put it up as a uh, put it up as some sort of christian festival but have destroy a 666 headlining <laughs> exactly don't mind me so, i'm just having a, a friday drink no 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 problem at all you, you you've started your holiday have you not i have yeah this is my um second week of holidays but i actually go away tomorrow so we head up north just for a week which will be mm. nice so yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. 
No, that's good. And I, yeah. uh, I know I, I talk about it often on the podcast that I'll never do a Patreon or anything, but I almost consider doing this one behind a paywall because when you first announced that Instagram was going to be uh, the slaves to the underground podcast Instagram, and you know you weren't going to show up on photos as much. I could I could feel the anguish <laughs> of the men on Instagram straight away. <laughs> Too funny. <laughs> well, congratulations on the podcast. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having fun with it. Um, we, you know, we're just sort of doing it when we can at the moment, but we I think this year we'll get into a good routine. And obviously, yeah. I'm going on holidays. Um, tomorrow so we thought January is just a, a hard time with Christmas and New Year's and everyone's on it's holiday season here because it's summer so yeah but we'll uh we'll come crashing back uh in yeah. February which will be really cool yeah now, not 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 to take credit for the idea but I did speak to you about it I think uh 18 months ago when we first <laughs> spoke I said you should do one what kind of finally pushed you over the uh over the cliff as far as uh, as actually getting it started so I've, because like people like yourself and other friends of mine have said, you've got to do a podcast. It's the next sort of obvious step for you and yeah. whatnot. And I just kind of didn't know how to get it off the ground. You know, computer wise and technical wise, it's my enemy. I repel technology. I, I have no patience with it. And it's one way to get me from zero to a hundred in seconds yeah. if things don't work for me. So, and my good friend, Maddie, who I do the podcast with, he was very, um, he's very tech savvy. And he's like, look, let's just do this because we both, we literally get together and talk about music all the time and different yeah, yeah. topics and subjects. And we've often said, we should just do a podcast because this is like really cool content and, you know, maybe people would want to hear us talk about metal and different things like that. So that's kind of how it came about. And then, so Matt does all the programming and mixing and everything like that. And I do all the social media advertising and running that page. We, we both kind of share access to the page, but Matt sort of, oh, you can deal, you can deal with your messenger. But so you, 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 you manage all of the, uh, the follower harvesters and the, uh, <laughs> all, all, all that other crazy shit i did like that rant by the way because i i completely agree with it i told you i do a i do a weekly sweep you know every single week i go on okay who's unfollowed me this week then pff, adios and uh yeah, you know, especially it's, it's, especially the bands that come you know asking you to listen to their demo or play their music and stuff like that then you know that follow you and then two days later they you know unfollow they, they unfollow you. you it's like dude fuck right off <laughs> It is. It's just such an uncool culture and it's just not an organic way to kind of keep your fan base. And I've spoken to fans of, you know, friends of mine who might not necessarily do what you and I do in the scene, but, that you know, they're constantly posting these albums that they've bought or the merch and things like that. And, and for these bands just to unfollow them, it's just, it's a slap in the face. If it wasn't for the, the fans and the people buying their albums and the merch, um, you know, that ultimately bands can sit there and go, oh, I don't care if, if no one buys my merch or, or albums, but that's utter bullshit because you wouldn't put an album out if you didn't want people yeah. to purchase it. So, yeah, um, yeah that, that was a good rant. We were both a bit passionate about that, that's for sure, if you couldn't tell. Oh, no, no, I could uh, I could tell. Um, <laughs> and as far as, like, I mean, you guys, you know, start, I, I don't would say start off because it wasn't your first episode, but, you know, you had um, Patrick on from from Bestlands, which was a great guest to get. Um, so, uh, I mean, the response so far has been awesome, right? It has been, yeah. It's been good. Like, we're getting quite a constant listening rate um, each month, which is great. Uh, we've put four episodes up now. And even people are going back and listening to our first episode uh, podcast which is great that's still getting traction so yeah I mean we'll just keep at it and and uh, hopefully people catch on and might enjoy listening to us and hopefully enjoy the songs that we're playing and the music that we're playing and of course we do reviews on there as well so I'm still reviewing but mm -hmm. um, just in a different format so we might go we might go visually uh, eventually but I'm actually not I'm not missing the whole video thing right now I'm enjoying the break and just being able to Pardon? How come you're not missing the, the video thing? Oh, uh, probably just the effort. <laughs> I'll be honest. <laughs> uh, you know, the effort coming home from work and having to sort of, you know, I've been in a hard hat all day and just trying to make myself look a little bit presentable for these videos and uh, just that little bit of pressure I might have felt, I suppose, when I was doing the videos that they had to be perfect and everything like that. So for me on the podcast, and I don't know if you've noticed if you've listened, but I just 
feel a lot more relaxed. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, I, I could hear that. I could, I could definitely hear uh, in the from about the second episode, you could kind of yeah. I think you guys, whatever jitters you had on the first one was was gone. You know, which is which is yeah. natural anyway. But there was a, like, the a nice thing. natural flow to it. You know, it sounded. You know, it sounded like you guys have been doing it. Obviously, you've, you've known each other, but it sounded like you'd been doing it for 40, 50 episodes. Oh, wow. That's very cool. Thanks, Jackie. Well, that's mm. that's good feedback because, yeah, yeah we, we said the same thing. We're like the second episode, we just felt like it was much more natural and smooth and we just kind of ran with it a little bit more. But, yeah, we were definitely nervous for the first episode, that's for sure. And you I know what tell. you mean about video, though, because it's. I remember when I first started doing this, recording the intros and the reviews and, and all that sort of thing, I found that way harder than actually doing it, you know, recording the, the thrust of the episode, which is, you know, a conversation with somebody. Because when you're kind of staring into a, into a camera and, you, and you're just talking, I, I, I find I can go... I can go off track really easily. I can, you know, I'll make I'll make a mistake or I'll, I'll stumble over a word and then I'll get pissed off. Yeah. And then the more pissed off I get, the worse it starts getting. I'll start making one after the other mistake. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, like, like nowadays I'm used to it. I can, I do most of my stuff pretty much in, in, in one, one take. But there's yeah. like the odd morning when I'll be doing it and I'll be like, Jesus Christ, I'm at fucking take 26 and I keep on <laughs> up this one thing. Because I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't kind of rehearse for it. I don't write anything down. No. But yeah. I just, I, I do want to just sound somewhat eloquent when I speak. So that's right. Yeah. And I think I, 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 I relaxed a lot more in my video reviews toward the end, but I said to Matt with the podcast, let's just be natural. If we make a mistake, if we fuck up a word, just keep going, you know, because at the end of the day, it brings that human element that we're not, you know, we're not perfect. We're just two people that love music and want to talk about it. So yeah, yeah, we just kind of go with it, which, and, and you'll hear that in our reviews when we're, we're sort of doing our reviews as well, that we get tongue tired and whatnot, but we just keep going, have a laugh at ourselves and keep going. Yeah. 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 No, I, I agree with you about the, the human elephants. I mean, that's why people tune into podcasts. It's, you know, it's long form conversation or it's a, you know, it's a long form show as opposed to like these kind of five, six minute sound bites, which, you know, I don't know, for some people that maybe they're like that, I, I personally don't find it particularly interesting. So, yeah, um, yeah. but I did, I, as far as like you not physically appearing on camera, like I said, I did, I did push the, uh, at the end of last year, I did push the angle and say, this is the only place you're going to be able to see it for, a, for see, <laughs> see Kelly for at least six months. <laughs> 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 Um, but uh, we we're, we're here to talk about best music of uh, of 2021, and uh, I ha- had said it for a while that like when I think when the Ars Magna Umbra record came out is when I decided I'm not I'm not doing a sh- uh, best of show <clears throat> on the on the other side of 2021 because I've found it for the last two years I've always been caught out kind of discovering stuff in mm-hmm. February or you know late yeah. January that had come out um you know the prior year and going fuck man that should have been on my on my list and then yeah you know i I almost had a bit of a a bad taste in my mouth when i saw i think it was decibel that put out their list at the end of october i'm like what the fuck man the 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 year isn't even close to being over and and it's it's like you're just just pushing out the shit now because you want to get you know you want to get the clicks and you want to get a bit of attention but if you you know i I don't want to take myself or the podcast or or the, the act of doing these lists too seriously but I, I kind of wanted to at least mean something, you know, yeah. I, that I've spent time listening to the bands and I've, you know, had a critical think about who should be where. And this year was probably, I mean, I, I'm curious to get your take on, on 2021, but fucking hell, <clears throat> from a music perspective, this was the most insane year that I, I can imagine. It wasn't like 2020 seemed, it kind of seemed to have these big peaks where you'd get like four or five great, great albums in, in one go. Yeah. 2021 was this just the steady trickle every single it weekend was. there was probably one two records worth listening to um and i always keep a, a running playlist on my my uh Cobuzz, which is the music streaming service that i use and i, I sort of notice things like jesus christ i've got like i think because it'll show you the track numbers i've got like 800 tracks on there already and that was yeah. that was october and then i knew there was a bunch of other stuff coming out as well so um yeah it's uh it's, it's been a just a phenomenal phenomenal year for from for music and it was difficult for me to get my my list narrowed down to 40 let alone 20. Yeah it's always hard and I said to you I've said to you before Jackie that I get very um stressy around this expectation of narrowing down your albums because it is just so hard and they're all so subjective for me and 
But then when I, you know, I I was really confident about my list and I still am. I think it's a really solid top 10 because it's all had meaning to me this year. But then, you know, you showed me your list and I was just blown away by these albums for some that I hadn't even heard. And it's like, how? And it's just no, impossible just so you to know, listen all to I, them all. All I and, expect is perfection. So. <laughs> What's that? Sorry? I said, just so, just so you know, all I expect is perfection. So. <laughs> of course. No, but that, I mean, this, this, that's the thing too. That's kind of the fun of doing these lists is you just dis- you you discover things that you wouldn't have you know you would otherwise not have um, not have heard or not have paid attention to. Um, I'm going to have Mike from Tombs on to do my my top ten with me, oh, but I specifically cool. chose you and him because I know I know that uh, you know we, we 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 dabble in the same scenes, but we kind of have divergent tastes. And yes. you know, I know you said you you have an aversion to technology. Most of the bands you listen to have a, an aversion to recording technology as well. <laughs> um, but okay, let's let's do it this way, right? We'll do top your top ten, and then I'll do my twenty to eleven. Um, Sounds good. And I'm pretty confident there's probably some overlap along the way, anyway. But uh, I will uh, I will turn to you, and then we'll uh, we'll edit in and throw in a couple of songs as well for folks to listen to. So Sounds let's great. start with your uh, with your number ten. My number 10. All right. My number 10 is by, well, it's the full of grimoires and I've probably just murdered that. And anyone that knows me knows that I'm notorious for murdering band names, track titles, but anyway, it is by the ruins of Beveras. Now these guys are a German um, black death doom band. I would call them uh, released in January, 2021. This is a bit of a different listen for me, Jackie, because it's not, it wouldn't normally be my go-to type of metal Yeah. Uh, just because there's, there's just so many. Um, the guitar <sighs> sound are too cleanly produced. Yeah. <laughs> you can, it's quite, you yeah, it is. But, you know, it got me through some really hard times this year. You know, there's so many, there's so many beautiful elements in this album too, but there's so many sinister moments. You know, they've got these incredibly sinister sound bites that just sort of sit behind the big mood of the, you know, the big doom vocals at times and the, the big, you know, heavy riffing. And it just was so captivating the entire way through. Um, there's there's these dark cascading hymns that come in through a lot of the album too and it's a very diverse listen you know some tracks are just uh uh, an instrumental so to speak but it just takes you away and then there's other tracks that kind of lead you into this sense of security that it's not going to be so face tearing and then it just becomes so face tearing and uh yeah it's just one that I put on so many times you know and I couldn't sort of turn it off I'd listen to it at night in bed with my headphones and it was kind of just uh, I don't know just a really good experience for me as an album and that one definitely has to sit at number 10 for me I loved the industrial ethereal elements throughout this album too particularly in tracks like polar his hysteria I love that track and uh, if anyone hasn't listened to this I haven't heard too many people talking about this but it's definitely worth a listen if you like your doom your death your black black metal it's got it all I, I I was very excited about that because I, I, did you spend much time listening to the, the previous record that Runes of Everest did, Exuvia? Do you know I haven't dived back through yeah. their discography yet. I was I've been so stuck on this album, and for me, I have to I've got to be ready to move off an album and yeah, go yeah. back to to their previous work. But I, I'm definitely going to do that for sure. So I would strongly recommend you go back and, and listen to that record because I think my problem with the Tulgrim was was that I I was so in love with Exuvia and it's to, to this day it's it's probably if I had to do like a top five uh, favorite albums of all time it it would be number two possibly with a uh, with a with a bid at being uh, number one depending on my yeah, mood right. at the time it, it it's 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 an incredible album. It's far more oppressive and it's far darker and it's far more, I think, emotionally intense than the Tulgrim was. And I think because my because of that, my expectations were so high for the Tulgrim was. I, I'm not actually, frankly, sure that Alex, anything that Alex could have done would have would have satisfied me. Um, yeah, yeah. So I I I I, I know a lot of people like this record. I I was. Uh, I don't, wouldn't would I say bitterly disappointed? I would I wasn't as disappointed by it as I was by the last Anal Nathrak uh, disgrace, but um, <laughs> I uh, I it, it just 
if you've if you've listened to Exuvia as many times as I have, and you've experienced that record in the way that you, you know, frankly, one sh- one should, um, you know, which is on a really great high five, you know, with the sound just blasting through your brain. Mm. Um, this one is just it, it had too many moments that sounded cheerful to me. There's too many major chords being used. That's issue number one. <laughs> yeah. It just it also didn't um it didn't flow together for me as well as Exuvia. Exuvia is a record that it literally feels like like a lot of van records, right? Van records releases. They kind of seem to go from one song in, you know, one lengthy song into the next. And they 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 really do take you on a journey. And this 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 record I felt like was getting there, but it just never quite had the momentum of Exuvia. But that being mm. said, you know, when I when I hear how passionately you speak about it, I am very convinced that if Runes of Everest had put out uh, the Tool Grimoires and then Exuvia, I probably would have thought much differently about this record. But I think my, yeah, that's my, right. my problem is the expectations. It's a little bit like um, you know, one of my other favorite bands, Akrakaka. Um, you know, I, I think that um, the last record that they did, I don't think I've, I don't, I don't really ever go back to it because it's not. Um, it's it's a it's a good album, but it just in, in comparison to the stuff that I that they had done previously that I that I love more, it just it just never quite gets there. It, it sounds like the band, yeah. but it never gets to it never hits the peaks that I love most about the band. You know what I mean? And I think that can happen with you know I, that's happened to me with bands that I know and love so well, and the album can feel like a bit of a disappointment. And maybe that's why this hit with me so hard because I hadn't really dived into any of their music before yeah. and um yeah it just really really caught me off guard and you know this time last year I probably I wasn't listening to anything like that you know I mean I love a bit of doom and and, and everything like that but I was probably went I'm, I'm very drawn to that very raw aggressive full throttle yeah, relentless yeah, yeah. sound but this was just a real experience and I absolutely loved it so well, I'm, I'm happy it's sitting at number 10 for me I was about to sure. say you're gonna you're gonna thank me for this but make sure that you check out Exuvia um, I will. It is. In my, like, like, like. I think the I think the phrase to use with that record uh, is similar to the phrase of meeting me in person. Life changing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just take a ticket from you over here, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like I said, make, <laughs> make make sure you check it out. It's it's absolutely brilliant. Um, but I anyway, okay. Will. So that's your number so, ten. Uh, moving number on 10. to number nine. So my number nine is and again into the light. Now this is by Panopticon. Most people know Panopticon. Again, it's a band that I've known about for many years and haven't really dived into their albums too much. They hail from Kentucky. This release came out in 2021. This was an incredibly emotionally charged album. Just so many delicious acoustic guitar moments, but fat, juicy riffs as well. And the gorgeous folk elements throughout this album, I really enjoyed. And for me, it was a journey and an experience of an album. And again, so different to what I was listening to um, in the previous year as well. So I thought, I'll just give them a go. And it just, I found this completely stirring, you know, the Mm. intro into certain tracks where there were just such soft soundscapes and then it just sort of propels you into this intoxicating compressed soundscape it was just incredible and uh very very dark album I I can kind of understand now why people do froth over them a little bit um and I have heard previous works of theirs but I didn't gravitate to it as much as I did gravitate to this album and definitely sits at my number nine I that that's it's got to be there it had to be in my top 10 because I've just listened to this album so so much and I tell everyone about it as well and I think that's a good sign when you're shooting albums off to people throughout the year saying listen to this listen to this but I'm not sure if you've heard that one Jackie you probably yeah no I, I I have and actually I'm probably in the same boat as you in the sense that I I, I knew that people used to uh you know get moist around the loins about uh, Panopticon but they never they never it, it's just something about it that just never appealed to me it's a little bit like wolves in the throne room yeah um, yeah i'm like that with them as well yeah and then uh and then this record i i think i should have spent a bit more time with it to be honest but i think it was just you know it sort of got lost in the maelstrom of everything that was that was coming out That's but it happens. was but it is an it's an excellent record and it was the first panopticon record that i listened to and i went fuck this is actually really really good it's again kind of like wolves in the throne room i thought primordial arcana um, which is really an honorable mention for me in uh, what's name in uh, 2021, as opposed to being on the top 20, you know, was a, was a really, really good, good album. Same, same with this one. Um, and I agree with you. I think it's, I, I think everything that, um, 
the that Austin, uh, you know, who's the the, the main man in Panopticon, um, yeah. has kind of wanted to do with this band. Um, he's done it. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah, he's it, like all the elements of the band has kind of finally come together in the in the right amount and and you know with the right dynamic uh, around it on this record. Um, and I, I'm very excited to see what he does in the future because I think if this is the groundwork for you know where he takes the the project, you know, two three years from now or two three albums from now, I should say. Um, I mean, it's going to be fucking incredible. But yeah, I, I, I agree. This is a very, very, very good record and certainly the first Panopticon record that I've gone, okay, this is some serious shit. Yeah, and I do. to be fair, I, I know that when it, this took me a few listens, it, it definitely grows. Yeah. And I don't know, you just hear more of the depth of the album with every listen. So definitely give it give it more playtime and I think it'll it'll definitely sit sit further and further with you that's for sure so you get to choose which track shall we toss in to uh to sell people on this record if they haven't heard it yet um and given the fact that many of the songs are past the 10 minute mark the choice <laughs> is between rope burn exit and moth eaten soul yeah rope burn exit it's definitely got to be my choice yeah all right all right so we'll toss that yeah. one in there brilliant track the weight of that track, the melancholy in that track is just exceptional. So it's definitely got to be that track. Cool.
All right. And All then right. on to number eight. Number eight. Now, this is a Siege Upon Light. This is by a Norwegian solo black metal project called Profuro. I've spoken about this man many a times. I'm a bit of a fan of his work. This album released in 2021, uh, sorry, June 2021. This is just nine tracks of icy cold black metal, catching drums, the riffs are ugly and enticing graveling vocals as well. It just ticked all the boxes for me. And what I loved about this is just there's such a story being told throughout this album. And it a lot of the albums that I've chosen for my top 10 is very obvious lyrical content. And I've missed that in my black metal because we went through, I think, you know, um, not 2019, 2020, where it was kind of the in thing for everyone to be incoherent and wailing and screaming throughout their black metal. And I, I miss the storytelling that should come with black metal as well. Yeah. And for me, this guy does it really, really well. Come Forth Thy Kingdom, Come of Ice is just incredible. It's so, the tones are just so ominous. And again, it's an album that you could probably put on and not dismiss, but maybe just go, oh, well, it's good but it really is an album that does grow with every listen. And there's so much heart and soul put into this album. He's really just put it all out there and the mood of the drums, everything. It's just, it's brilliant. And um, I think it's great work from him. So I'm happy that that's sitting on my uh, top, top 10 and at number eight, that's for sure. Well, this was one of those that I, I um, was, was glad I brought you on the show for, because I, I, it, it completely passed me by. As soon as I saw the album title, A Siege Upon the Light, I was like, this sounds like my kind of vibe. <laughs> and um, I, I, to be honest, I've, I've not yet spent a huge amount of time listening to it because I was uh, enjoying the freedom afforded by the sunshine of South Africa until a couple of days ago, which is yeah. why you catch me in a rare, vaguely tanned moment. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> the uh, uh, they, I know Profuro are on Screaming Skull Records, and we'll talk about another Screaming Skull Records release uh, later on in the show. But um that label seems to be putting out some very, very cool stuff. Um, All that stuff, yeah. Yeah, you know, lo lo lots of great stuff from uh, from Norway, but you know, they've got a band from Colombia, they've got a band from Belgium, Slovakia, uh, they've got a US band. Uh, there, there's there's some there's some very very solid stuff coming on there, and this is something I'll definitely check out um, as well. Um, Good. Like I said, I, I, it was it was one that had completely passed me by. Um, yeah. So I'm glad and that's that easy to uh, do. You've mentioned it's easy it. to do. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's um, my dog. Sorry about that. I knew she'd do this. <laughs> no, 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 no worry. Uh, She's my, been on fire today. I'm sorry. My um, my uh, my dog. If you see the sofa behind me, every so often when I'm on a work call, she'll be lying there asleep, and then she'll just kind of peer her head over the side, and then just go back <laughs> down again, and uh, and camera bomb me. Um, okay, so number seven. Yes, but let me know what you think when you have listened to that album. That's for sure. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so number seven is Pale Swordsman by uh, Kek Arak. I think that's how you pronounce it. A solo artist from the Ukraine, mm -hmm. April 2021. I might have to go and get her, Jackie. She's probably not going. No, there. that's fine. Oh, I'm here on my own, so I don't have anyone to uh, help with the little rascal. So she's going to be, she's going to cameo in this for a little bit. That's, that's fine. Everyone um, knows she's not, a, she's not a teacup dog, at least. I thought you'd, you'd, you'd have one of no, those little handbags with the, with the teacup dogs. Is <laughs> she is she Phoebe. the only one that you have? Yeah, she's the only one. And uh, she's got the Omen theme music as her little uh, anthem. <laughs> she's yeah. the female version of Damon, I'm sure. How old is she? <laughs> uh, she's six. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well. she's a good girl. But we're, we're getting stormed, so I think she's a little on edge with just all the electricity electricity that's in the air so mm. yeah, yeah but anyway she'll calm down now so yeah the power swordsman have you heard that one i, I, mean, I have not I... no uh this is another one that passed me by uh yeah, so and i'm just of, looking at people... uh at this dude's photo on uh or his, his name is crying orc uh on metal crying archives orc, yeah. and he's standing there with a sword and corpse yeah, paint look... which is you know immediately the right the right kind of aesthetics <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know, this album, as I said, he hails from the Ukraine. And for me, Jackie, this is truly a piece of art. It's it's there's nothing groundbreaking as such going on here, but it's just executed so well. And you know 
there's these piano keys that he does throughout the the tracks as well it's just so haunting and a little bit obscure he's just got that really enticing black metal vocal and it's a very very despairing and sad album but the tempo of the album is a really steady pace as well so it's not dsbm as, as far as um slow and and kind of you know uh apathetic it's very it, it's it's a good steady pace but there's just yeah. this very obvious sadness um sitting behind the album and it's truly incredible i love it a lot of people within the underground have been talking about this album some people have it far higher up but um it really is a, a great listen so I, I hope that's another one that you'll enjoy yeah no no for sure and there's, i i uh i spoke with uh with someone about this a while back around the different kind of flavor or the different aesthetic that you get in um you know from different scenes um, you know, like you, you, you tend to get that really sort of filthy, almost Southern fried vibe from a lot of us black metal, yes. uh, you know, Australia I've mentioned this many times before, sort of have that just slightly off kilter, um, sound to a lot of what they do. Uh, but I agree with you, like, like around the sadness, it, it's actually something that I find is quite a common thread that goes through a lot of Ukrainian black metal. Um, mm. you know, and I don't know whether that kind of goes back to their, their folk music, because if, because anytime I've heard Russian or Ukrainian folk music, it, it sounds pretty maudlin um but uh yeah definitely there, there's there's definitely kind of that thread that runs through a lot of bands that that come out of uh come out of the ukraine and also there's a lot of fucking great bands that come out of the ukraine i mean 1914 yeah. is awesome Drutka, obviously, if you're not a fan of your uh you're a proposer but um <laughs> the, uh, uh no definitely definitely something i'll check out as well um yeah do do it it's a, it's a stunning album it's just it's just beautiful i think it's absolutely beautiful Cool. So and then, uh, so, so next, uh, I think we're at up to number six for you, right? We're up to number six. Now this is the, uh, burning, sorry, under the burning eclipse by storm ruler. Now storm ruler also hail from the U S and I would class them as a black and death extreme metal band. This is an incredible album. It's absolutely huge. There are 19 tracks on this album. Uh, so there's a part of me that thinks that and I was talking to Matt about this the other day, that when bands put 19 tracks on an album, there's a part of me that thinks they probably should have banked some for another album because it's yeah. hard to sit and listen to 19 tracks in one sitting. So I did have to listen to this uh, album in parts because it, it's so full throttle, it's so heavy. But what I loved about this album, um, vocally it's just completely insanely good. Um, I think fans of Emperor will really enjoy the vocal execution because it's very reminiscent of Emperor, um, but there's also some incredibly old school heavy metal riffs, Metallica inspired riffs even. And uh, it's just, you know, it's, I imagine there's a band coming into the scene. It's hard to top those groundbreaking albums and those grand, groundbreaking bands, but when bands like this come together and, you know, pay homage to those bands by having those influences throughout the album. It's just really refreshing. Well, it's nice to hear. And um, yeah, this is just killer. Very, very heavy. Must be listened to at maximum volume. And uh, yeah, but if you can get through it in one sitting, fucking hell, because <laughs> it's 19 well, it, it, tracks. It's, I was about to say it's 19 tracks, but it's nine instrumentals. So they uh, they they went to town on the old, uh, on the old instrumentals to flesh things out. They but did. it is, I, I, I think the, the, the most... Um, impressive thing about this record, much like, you know, in, in, I'd say we've been, you know, blessed is maybe the, not the right term, but we've certainly been gifted with a lot of very, very cool black metal debuts, I'd say in the last five to six years in particular, like, you know, a lot of two man, one man projects, um, you know, just, just bands, you know, coming out of pretty obscure countries um yeah. you know putting out their first record and you go jesus christ where the fuck did this come from and That's i listened right. to this when i saw your list uh, because i i prioritized the, the the names that were higher up um and uh i mean definitely i totally agree with you very very impressive and you know for a debut yeah. in particular i think what That's i like about debut. here is the, the 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 level of ambition um you know and the level of um of maturity that they that they have in in producing this record but then jesse scoble who's the drummer uh he played drums in scour so uh you know it's not like it's not like these guys are coming from you know nowhere they no no they're not they kind not of have some degree of pedigree and they have they absolutely. you know they, they 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 know what you know they 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 know what the um 
You know what time it is. <laughs> so oh, I'm, 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 I'm lost for a there phrase is, there, but anyway. No, there is no novice musicianship throughout this album. And, and as you said, the production is just incredible. And for a debut, it, it's massive. So, uh, yeah, great, great album. Very, very crushing album. And uh, as I said, must be played loud, that's for sure. So, so on, that, on that note, uh, again, I'll throw it out to you to uh, to select a, a track off this record. Um, sure. So that will be, uh, I think I've chosen Of Hollowed Souls and Distant Flames. Awesome. All right. So uh, that is uh, that, that is what we will go with.
And then we'll All move right. on to number, number five. five. Oof, it's getting heavy now. So this is Zenith by Imperialists. So another US uh, band, black and well, I'd call them melodic black and death. Um, now I discovered the Imperialist, well, Imperialist, sorry, I always put the in front of their name. Back in, I think last year, and it was their Cypher album, which came out in 2018 and just blew my mind. And Zenith for me is just an exceptional um, carry on from this album. Such a galactic, commanding, masterful album. And Maddie actually reviewed this album for us on the podcast recently. And ever since that review, I've just been listening to it flat out because I was really looking forward to this um, coming out. It only released in November, 2021. Probably would have been higher up on my list, possibly if I'd been listening to it as long as the other albums, but I'm still kind of diving into this album, but it's just captivated me really, really um, in a huge way. It's just such a fantastic composition. For me, these guys just haven't left any tone up, stone unturned. They've put everything into this. There's no moments where you feel like that could have been heavier or the production has kind of taken away from the weight of those guitars or to me, they've just nailed it. And it's just... An experience and the commanding authoritarian vocal execution is just so powerful bloody brilliant album and everyone needs to go and listen to zenith so if you haven't you need to go and listen to it i was it. just about to say i'm gonna to have to put that on my list as well it, it came out pretty late in the year as well november 26th yeah november so, 20th, um, so it's a late one yeah so uh no i think that was one that that passed me by that i will definitely put down on the list um they i'm um, looking at their photo though they're some clean cut boys uh, although no, they, they they do have long hair, but they don't look no, as, uh, yeah, as 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 filthy hair. as the usual black metal black metal men. Um, yeah, look, they're probably not. I wouldn't call them straight black metal. There's definitely a, a cross genre going on with them. Um, but yeah, the, just their display of musicianship, their creativity is just really exceptional. So, and do listen to Cipher as well because that is also an incredible album. So I feel like these guys have just nailed both of those albums. Definitely awesome. wasn't disappointed with this follow-up. Cool. We're up to number and then four. I was just about to say, we're getting into the business end of things now. So number four. Point end. This is 66 Black Wings by Gallows. Now, these guys also hail from the US, very raw, evil-sounding black metal released in June 2021. This is just a blistering listen. Again, I loved that the vocals were coherent. I could hear every word and it was like a damn summoning. There was so much power in the way the vocals are executed. It's ugly, it's filthy, it's raw, but the musicianship, once again, they've nailed it. It's a very riff-driven album, which is what I miss in a lot of black metal that's coming out today. Uh, you know, as far as solo projects and duos, because I'm pretty yeah. sure there's only two guys in this band. Yeah. But these these guys can do it all. They're proper musicians. And, yeah, it's very blasphemous and just telling a very evil, dark, hateful story. And that's black metal. That's what you would expect. But it's it's gone back to the real old school kind of sound, which I really enjoy, but great production. And, uh, yeah, when I heard this, I was in Sydney at the time and, I was just like, what is, who is this? And I went onto their Instagram and they had something like a hundred followers, you know, they, they just didn't have anyone following them. And I'm thinking, how can bands bring albums out like this and no one even knows about it? Mm. So uh, hopefully they're sitting at number four. Hopefully people jump on and have a listen. Because well, I, I, I discovered them stuff. thanks to you because I remember you raving about them when, uh, when this record came out. Um, and yeah. uh, I immediately went to, went, went to go check it out. Um, and I uh, totally agree with you. Absolutely love it. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's kind of, you know, it's grim, it's hateful. So it, grim it, and hateful. It, have such a, it, it has such a kind of caustic element to it. Um, I, I, I absolutely, which I, which I love in black metal as well. Um, and yeah. I agree with you on the riffs. Um, I mean, I think there's a lot of, uh, for, for me, riffs are important, but I, I am also very much about atmosphere. Uh, or about some Definitely. sort of, about a vibe, you know. I, I don't really care how the band ends up creating the vibe as long as they just do it properly. Um, yeah. Uh, or as, or as long as it's something that's that, that, that's absorbing. Like like, I've recently, I don't know why I kind of warm to it, but I, I really do like the dynamic of of uh, you know band that'll just use like just a kind of very simple like two note guitar uh, you know piece alongside you know synths or you know vocal hook of some sort and, and and doing it really really well but then you know again you 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 do from time to time 
uh, have an appetite for for something that's uh, at least from a riff perspective a bit more meaty. And I mean, these guys have that in spades. So eight eight fucking brilliant tracks and, a, and an awesome record. Yeah, absolutely. I, mean, I think my comment comes from. Uh, there seemed to be last year and even possibly the year before a lot of projects. There was a time for pro- projects were just going off their face. There was just yeah. a project coming out left, right and centre. And it was it was sort of like the rule that you could just do a two chord riff and wail these vocals and, and call it black metal. And, you know, it, it's so much more than that. So, mm. yeah, I feel like these guys are paying huge respect to, you know, what the genre is about. And uh, it's a great album. Yeah, no, I agree with Definitely. you. Okay, right, number, number three. three. So number three is Murder Season by Black Knife. These guys are a black and punk thrash death metal band hailing from Kentucky in the USA. I'm really going to town with the US bands, aren't I? But I know. this came out in March 2021. Anyone that knows me is probably not surprised at all that Black Knife and Murder Season in particular is sitting at number three because it's such an incredibly obnoxiously heavy and fun album and you can just put it on and listen to the whole thing with your head exorcist style turned in the other direction by the end of it because it's just so full throttle it's filthy it's offensive in its lyrical content and its song titles and it's it's just fun you've got those great punky tones coming in and uh the great reverb on the vocals that give it that you know early venom vibe and it's it's just a, a really good listen so if, if people aren't familiar with black knife jump back through their discography because they've got lots to offer but murder season is uh it's a cracking album i i was not surprised that you uh, had this up pretty high um this was another band i discovered through you actually and i i really like this record it kind of reminds me of those uh those old VHS tapes that folk you would trade with, yeah. you know, obscure hardcore or obscure, uh, you know, thrash or black metal bands. Um, but, uh, you know, all, all the band, all, it's like all the band members were, uh, were abducted by mayhem. As a matter of fact, I yeah. actually, I actually, the, the first thing I thought of when I, when I listened to this record the first time was, um, this is, li- this is literally like mayhem doing exploited covers. <laughs> Like if you want the, if you want a, a description of Black Knife music in its <laughs> simplest form, that that's that's you know what it uh, that's what it sounds like. I really you know about, about this record. I love the live feel of the production. Um, you know, yes. it, it really does sound very live. It, it does. Be, it wouldn't surprise me if they recorded it live as well. But I you know, however they did it, it's great. It's it's very simplistic, it, but it's you know really really infectious and really sticks with you. And you know, even though I'm not necessarily a, a fan of albums being too short. Um, yeah. I feel like this record at 29 minutes, it, it, it never, it, it's, it's just the right, uh, just the right length for a, for music like this, you know, it never out, out wears it's welcome. It leaves you yeah. wanting more at the end. Um, May comes in, it says what it needs to say and it, and it, and it's done, but it's superb record. It is. It's such a great, great listen. It's just, yeah, it's, it's catching and heavy and, yeah, go and listen to it if you haven't listened to it for people who are watching and listening, that's for sure. Right, my number two now, Jackie. Holy mm-hmm. shit. <laughs> I know. So it's so funny because I have my number one and my number two and I was like, I'm pretty sure I know which one I need to put where, but I actually went and had a listen to both these albums again yesterday, uh, which kind of sealed the deal for me. But uh, two very different albums, but both great. But it is The Broken Seal by Lucifer. Uh, a lot of people have been talking about this album. Mikey, who used to do reviews for me with Kelly T Black Metal Reviews, shot me this one, and I was just absolutely hooked on this. It's just such an incredible listen. It's so, so heavy. It's so compressing. And every time I listen to this, I'm just reminded about how mammoth this album is. And it's just a fantastic Black and Death heavy metal listen and the vocals for me are just completely crushing I mean this is guttural is just whopping it's so big and uh, it just creates such an ominous mood over the entire album there's so much aggression and um, threatening elements throughout this album and it just gives you that real you know don't go down that dark alley because that's where Lucifer are and they're just going to take your soul. So uh, it's an incredible album. And yeah. Uh, yeah, it's definitely sitting at number two for me. Uh, and um, it, was, it was hard to put it there, but it's there. I'm strongly with you there as well. It's a fucking great, great record. And I, I raved about this on, on my podcast when it came out. Um, it, it to me is exactly what 
you know, when you when you use the phrase, because you know, the phrase blackened to death metal gets tossed around and a fucking awful lot at the moment. But when you use that phrase, if you you know want to really understand what that should sound like, you just need to it's listen to the broken seal. You know, yeah. it's got elements of you know the sort of hate eternals craziness to it but then it also has you know elements of second wave black metal uh and that really cool atmosphere that they bring in but these guys almost kind of take it that one step further and make it even darker and even more oppressive um so dark. and i think i think i think oppressive is a great word for the record but it's kind of oppressive in the be- in the best possible way um it, it, it it's, it's absolutely stunning and it's also one of those albums where for me, this is almost a uh, hallmark of all great records is they have to work well as a start to finish listen. I don't really, yes. like I, there's two things in my old age that that are really starting to, or that, that will that'll disqualify an album almost immediately for me. I don't like shitty drums. I, I like, I truly detest overly simplistic drums. Like I, I've, I've heard bands recently that people have been uh, raving about and then, you listen to the drummer and it's just literally I want fills, yeah. I want craziness, I want variety. I, I can't stand that fucking because then you may as well just program the drums, right? Yeah, that's and right. So that that so that's one thing that's an instant disqualifier. And I don't like records that sound like they've just been thrown together. Yeah. I like I like it when I when I can hear an album and I can hear there's been some thought put into how do these tracks flow? How does this album kind of build up to its, you know, its peak? It's Absolutely. Pushing, oh, um you know and then uh you know how do we uh like i said how do we create an an absorbing end-to-end experience and i I think these guys have absolutely fucking nailed it um yeah i i I agree i think there's got to be some some strategy there when an album gets put together and you can tell when bands have done that where they've strategically placed songs to uh to build the album up like you say and i think this this band does it really really well such a great album yeah, I got a bit of lip uh, over how much I was raving about them because uh, people were like, "Oh, well, the Sun Eater and uh, you know the calling depths are better." I don't, I don't agree with that at all. I think this is the best thing I've ever done. Um, yeah, it's incredible. Uh, but uh, yeah, top top notch record, and I think uh, in, a, in a in a good spot on uh, on your list. Um, which brings you to your number one. Number one, number one is Revelator by the Amenta. Now. These guys are from Australia. I'm not being biased, um, despite what people might think. This was just a display of complete artistry, creativity and heaviness. This is an absolutely mystifying album. It's just blown my mind. Every time I listen to this album, it blows my mind even further. Uh, For me, you know, I, I mean... This has been a while since the Amenta have brought something out and listening to their previous work, which which I've done so for some time, I've always loved it, you know, and I've loved their industrial elements and, and everything like that. But for me, Revelator has almost created a genre unto themselves with this one. It's just so incredibly unique. They've put so much thought into this. It's really... Um, just the thought process and the creativity that's gone into this is just mind-blowing. And it's so damn heavy. Mm. And Kane's vocals, I mean, the, Tim's sound bites and uh, samples, if, um, if that's what you call them, are just so incredibly uh, atmospheric and just bring such a mood to everything that's going on within Revelator. But the vocals for me, I mean, Kane's range, he's, he's got this incredible low guttural that just, you know, crushes you and then his screams are just so curdling. But he's cleans and and people will look at me and go, cleans? Because I always talk about I'm very fussy with my cleans in metal and very rarely do I enjoy it. Yeah. If any bands are thinking about putting cleans in their extreme metal, listen to the Amenta because these guys know how to do it well. These guys know how to do it without withdrawing any of the heaviness from the sound, without taking away any of those you know, compressing and heavy and full throttle elements and just give it a whole other dimension, uh, dimension, sorry, dimension with their cleans. I'm getting so excited. I'm getting tongue tied. I mean, it's just, it's just mind blowing. You know, I mean, there's there's the silent twin, for example, is four minutes, 17 of very haunting soundscapes and sound bites. And then you've got Kane's vocals sitting back in the production, but just the weight of it is still there. It's still such a heavy, uh, heavy in a different way, though. It's just such a heavy emotive listen. And then it's yeah. 
flies into tracks like, you know, um, Parasite Lost, for example, which is just full on blasts and incredible drum percussion execution. And it's an incredible album and I'm probably blowing all the smoke, but it, it, it truly is. And it's just um, very deserving of number one. And I'm sure I'm not the only person who would have it at number one. I was one. just about to say, so I'm not going to talk about it too much because uh, it may, uh, when I do my top 10, it, it may may or may not have appeared on there. But I, you know, it's it's no uh, no secret my thoughts on this band. I I you know way back when Ocasus came out, um, you know, I was blown away by them, and I've I've been a fan of this band ever since. <clears throat> it was so great for me to see this record come out and and get the kind of um, reception that it did, um, yeah. because I remember speaking with Tim, and um, you know, he he was very. I wouldn't say he was apprehensive, but he was certainly cognizant of the fact that this was very different to anything that they'd ever done. Mm -hmm. But I think in terms of difference, I think they've just, um, I think this is a step up creatively that that I don't think oh, anybody was, was, was expecting. And I don't know whether you saw the in the episode that I did with Kane, uh, where he was talking about his kind of approach to vocals and his philosophy around singing and things like that. And when you understand how he how he tackles the the act of singing, you you kind of get why you know why he was able to do those clean vocals as well as as he did why no matter what he's doing or no matter where the music is going there's there's an intensity that he brings that's always there and it's there whether Absolutely. it's on silent twin or you know on any of the 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 album's heavier records um it, it just i was on a heavier record sorry heavier songs but it just it just it it's there's always there so it's, it's, it's always there that energy and that brooding intensity is always it is always there but the thing is it's it's everyone in the everyone in the band i mean i'm a i'm a huge fan of dave haley uh for a variety of reasons but you know certainly um the uh you know the drums that he's done on year i think is fucking phenomenal Incredible. because i was talking earlier about simplistic drums and how much they annoy me but what dave does extremely well is he knows exactly when to you know put his foot down and show off and he knows exactly when to be restrained so you have a song like seer money that's almost got this like I don't. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not smart enough to know what the technical term for it would be, but I'd call it like a disco beat. <laughs> like you know, it has like this, like you know, four four groove. Um, yeah. But it, it works so brilliantly well with that song. Like I, I can't. I almost can't think of a drummer that would have been able to do that better um, yeah. than th than he does. He's got such an inflective way of playing. Like he he. It's like he feels the music as he plays it. So he like if you listen to what he does on on Werewolves. I mean. He has the exact same approach to playing drums on on werewolves as Matt has to writing the riffs, which is spontaneous, just fucking combustion. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and he, and but but again, he, but yeah, he brings something totally different. He he kind of brings the emotion and the precision and the intensity that everyone else in the band has as well. Um, yeah. And again, I, like I said, I, I don't want to talk about it too much because. <laughs> <laughs> they may you, they may well appear on my, uh, on, my, again, on my top 10 <laughs> list so i don't want to be repeating myself but uh yeah what 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 a what a record what a band Absolutely and what amazing. a what a what a what a bunch of men because uh i've had three of them on the on the podcast now they're fucking great they're all they're yeah. awesome guys and they they deserve every single bit of of praise and plaudits that's uh that's coming to them they really are. They're very cool, humble, humble guys, and and that's uh, that's always nice when when you um, you know get people like that. It's refreshing. So. Well, the, well, the other thing is, how cool are the, are the aesthetics of the band when they're on stage and stuff like that? I think what they've done from a you know stage set and and you know that that kind of thing, I think is fucking awesome. I love it. It's Every incredible. time I see photos, I'm like, Jesus, man, I want to see these guys play. Um, well, that was supposed to play in Sydney. Um, last late last year but unfortunately that was cancelled due to COVID but I, I'll be definitely stinging to see them when they can finally do their tour um, would you uh because, would you get them on one of your shows I would love to get them on one of my shows so yeah. yes yep um, on my on my Christmas episode I was talking to our, our mutual friend uh Evan uh and I was talking to Marco from Stellar Master Elite and the the one thing that they mentioned we were talking about I was saying there's there's a bunch of bands that are um, you know that are independent that I think I can't understand why they're not signed and I was thinking to myself like maybe at some point down the line I could start a record label and and, and start putting some of these bands out and then they said yeah they made a good Marco especially made a good case and said that's not maybe necessarily what you need you you kind of have the podcast that could be a fulcrum for for these bands to come together but maybe maybe do like a festival in London. Um, 
and then I started thinking to myself, if I if I did ever attempt something like that, like who would I get to play? And yeah. I mean, wish list would be, you know, you'd have a couple of of bigger but into the necrosphere affiliated names like Tombs, um, the Amenta. I'd beg, plead, scream, get Antichrist Imperium to uh, to to do like a one off show as well. Um, <laughs> And then you have like a bunch of smaller stuff, but yeah, I mean, what a that would be a fucking cool lineup. But anyway, that I'm sorry, I'm I'm I'm, I'm 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 rambling now, but I I it is I agree it is very your... fun putting lineups together. Def- definitely don't rule it out for later, Ducky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I I uh, as I said, I I agree with you. I think it's a it's a just in, it's an incredible record. Really um, okay, so let's move on to my top twenty, uh, or actually my twenty to eleven, and I'm going to start with number twenty, the band you turned me on to. Um, yeah. uh, Fred and Stoll, uh, and the record is Silence is Eternal, which I I I, I really like the last Fred and Stoll record, but I must confess I, I I thought there were moments on the album where it became uh, not not too derivative, but almost a little too indulgent in its um, you know in in what uh, Michael was was trying to pay tribute to. Um, mm. It was it, like I said, very good record, but when I heard this album, I mean, this was something that I, I, I wasn't expecting. And I, I, the description I gave him at the time, it gave me exactly the same feeling as I did was, as I got when I used to, you know, listen to those bands that were forbidden by, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the authoritarian Christians at school and stuff like that, you know, the bands that are in the books or in the, in the, in the videos, uh, that, that someone like Hillsong would put out to say, you need to avoid these people. <laughs> I think from the second that you hear Cold Northern Hellscape's kind of main, it was the first song, that main riff kick in, that vibe mm-hmm. is there straight away. Um, yeah. And he, he seems to kind of pull that through the entire rest of the record. I, I think it's just a fucking phenomenal album. And you, you, you talk about riff orientated black metal. Uh, he does I mean, it very this well. is just, I was about to say, this is absolutely top notch, sensational work. The best, best thing he's ever done by far. Yeah, um, I agree. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I agree. yeah I, you, did you spend much time with this album? I have actually, and it's it's on my like it's in my top albums. Um, but I agree. I think the maturity of his songwriting and where he's taking this album is so evident from the Tyrant Shade. And mm. I loved the Tyrant Shade, and I still listen to that now. But yeah, you can just see him as a, a songwriter just maturing, and um, he's sort of coming into where he wants to be. I, I think that's what what I hear when I listen to it, and it's definitely a very good album. So yeah. I wasn't surprised that it was sitting sitting on your top ten because it, it is it's such a great album. Top twenty, um, top 20. But, uh, yeah. Uh, I've had a lot of sun today. Let me just tell you. <laughs> no, no, that's no, fine. Um, all right. So then, at my number nineteen, and I never expected this to to be on my uh, top twenty list. Uh, if you start asked me at the start of the year, I would have told you I probably don't care about the record, but. Um, Sometimes, you know, you, you know what it's like. An album just catches you at exactly the right time. Uh, and this album somehow just, it just, it just hit me at exactly the right time. Uh, the record is Persona Non Grata by Exodus. Um, I fucking love this album. I don't know. <laughs> it's nothing, nothing you've not ever heard from Exodus before. No. Uh, it's nothing you've not heard from, you know, Thrash or anything like that before. But it is just so, so, so good. Um, it's, it's aggressive. It kind of... So I, I said this to Jack Gibson when I had him on the podcast. I saw them uh, play a show with Prong and Obituary about four or five years ago. And yeah. I was I, I remember standing at the bar watching them and saying to my friend, fucking hell, man, I don't know what's going on with Exodus, but it's like watching a, a, a young band play. Because again, mm-hmm. it wasn't I, I, I wasn't even looking, massively looking forward to seeing them. And, I, and just when they, when they were there, I was just mesmerized. I was like, they have this kind of craziness and this unhingedness on stage where... It, it kind of reminded me a little bit of, of uh, you know, Monday Night Raw back in the late 90s and, you know, WCW Night Raw back in the late 90s where it just feels like fucking shit could pop off at any at any moment. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and this, this is what this record feels like to me. Um, you know, they, right. they, they have these moments where you've got, you know, they've got more gang vocals, they've got more dueling vocals, they've, you know, the, the guitars sound just a little bit more reckless, more punky, a little bit than... Um, you know, then maybe some of this stuff they've done previously. And even though it's still very slickly pr- produced, um, there's kind of a rougher and a, and a more live edge to this than I think there was, or there has been on Exodus for a very long time. But I, I, I truly think this is one of the best 
kind of modern, maybe more accessible metal records that has come out in a very long time. And it's a bit to me like, you know, Exodus kind of stepped up and, and you know, has shown a lot of uh, what passes for modern metal these days. Like this mm-hmm. is how you make a record that a lot of people can get into, but retains the danger and retains the, uh, the punch that a lot of, um, you know, that, that, that a lot of you guys seem to clearly not know how to fucking do. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, top notch album. Yeah, I had a listen to it because I I'm not a big Exodus fan, and yeah. I did have a listen to it. But um, I think I probably have to listen to it a bit more. The vocals for me, and I'm I'm real funny with thrushy vocals, um, just kind of did great on me a little bit. But um, I know <laughs> there's someone that listens to black metal vocals. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, but I will listen to it again because you've just the way you've described it's made me kind of see it in a different light. So. You know, if I can go back and have a listen with that in mind, maybe I'll I'll get a bit more out of it than I did. But I did listen to quite a few songs. I didn't get through the whole album, but yeah, yeah, I, I gave it a crack, Jackie. <laughs> no, no, it's fair <laughs> enough. Look, and I know Zetro's vocals on for everybody. Um, you know, I I just think again, I think his vocals on this record sound great. And I and I've I've had it before where I've listened to him and I was like, oh fuck, man, I, I can't stand his vocals. It sounds terrible. But this, uh, like I said, I don't know what it is. This album just it just. <laughs> Just got you. I I just I I was in I when I first listened to it I was in my car, um and so I don't know if it was a combination of driving and it just being the you know a great driving record to listen to but uh, it's also yeah. a great gym record it's yeah phenomenal. Um, I'll give it another go. <laughs> moving on to number eighteen, um a record called Abyss of Wrathful Deities by a band called Grave Miasma, uh, who incidentally are touring Europe uh, imminently with uh, one of your bands, uh, the Runes of Everest. Um, ah, but cool. uh, yeah, so this is a uh, this is a UK band. Um, I believe that uh, this is their second record. Um, it is also it, it reminds me a little bit of Lucifer in the sense that if you you know if you had to tell somebody um, you know what black and death metal sounds like, you know this is the this is the sort of point to. I think Grave Asthma is a bit more death in in their in this you know in their sound, but it's. They definitely have the, the 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 black metal aesthetic and the black metal approach uh, to doing things, um, you know. And it is just a fucking pounding, grim, nasty record. You know, super yeah, it's aggressive. a ferocious record. Absolutely, it's one that I've listened to a lot. It, it's 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 further up the line for me, but I think it's just a case of I was just listening to so much other yeah. metal as well. And you know, you've said it yourself. It's just something's just slipped through but when you sent that list through and I had a list and I was just like you know this is why they are who they are they're just they're just excellent yeah no absolutely top notch um I'll chuck in a song actually um as we've uh, been yakking on for a while so uh I am going to play a track called Under the Megalith
And then uh, I will move on to number 16. Uh, this was a, another Marco, uh, uh, and I say Marco, Stellar Master Elite, a, a Marco recommendation. Um, funeral Winds. Um, I'm very surprised, by the way, that this isn't higher up on your lists. Uh, but Funeral Winds, the album is called Grusel Um uh, I believe Funeral Winds has now dwindled down to a one-man project. Um, but I would imagine, you know, whoever is involved in this, Satan is at their, is at their left hand. <laughs> <laughs> whilst it's being Definitely. whilst it's being done because uh Grusel Amenten is a fucking brilliant album brilliant it, i mean it sounds like it was released in 1993 um yeah yeah it's but, great but uh you know it is a short sharp shock of top notch second wave uh black metal absolutely nothing pretty nothing dainty nothing sweet in the in the sound whatsoever it is just relentless violence and anti-christian hate <laughs> like and it's starting... telling a story i know yep. i was like i love this because i can hear the lyrics i uh, when you sent this to me jackie i actually sent this off to um several people that i knew would appreciate this once i had a listen it's excellent yeah no absolutely absolutely top notch and then at number 15 uh your countrymen um i i think i've got on my my total top 20 this year i've got three or four australian bands uh, I can't remember quite off the top of my head, but Australia once again got a lot of love. Um, this is uh, a band called Spire. They're out of Brisbane. Uh, the, the album is called Temple of Kronos, which is their second record. Um, and uh, it came out on Sentient Rune Laboratories. Um, I was not expecting this whatsoever when I heard this album. They came out, I think, on the same weekend as another band, band that I really liked called Suffering Hour. Um, but this just absolutely blew me away. Um, you know, it's again, it's got that same that same Aussie um, blueprint of we're kind of we're in the genre, but we're just not quite on the same axis as anyone from any other country. Um, yeah. There's like all these little unique bits thrown in. I think what they've done with the vocals, you know, they, there's some really experimental, interesting things being done there. Absolutely. The riffs are great. The the drums are fucking great. Uh, I, I, this is just a it's just an incredible record. Yeah, it's quite an avant-garde uh, psychedelic listen too. There's some yeah. real psychedelic moments throughout this album and I'm definitely going to be listening to more of this one. I think it's going to take me a few listens to really appreciate it. But on my first listen, when I got your list the other day, I was like, oh, this is not bad at all. This is not bad at all. So, uh, yeah, I'll definitely uh, give that one well, a go. You've got, a, you, you've got an awful lot to be, uh, you know, to be proud of as far as uh, Australia is concerned. I mean, the Australian scene is just fucking sick. It is. We've got an we've got an incredible scene, and that's why it's just so disappointing at the moment that we can't experience any of this live at the moment, which is such a shame. But I know, um, you know, most countries are in the same boat. But it's awful. When until when have they cancelled your shows? So I've had uh, I've had several shows postponed that that I've put together so far, and uh, another one just recently cancelled. But my next two big shows, which I can't announce, who's headlining those but um i think you'll be a little bit excited about them jackie um they will be in may and august because i'm hoping that by then things might have settled down and we'll be back to full capacity and standing and everything like that but there's uh hardly anything going ahead at the moment where we're sort of coming into um a bit of a peak with cases so venues bands punters everyone's a little bit nervous and um yeah promoters and bands are just calling it and uh, cancelling the shows at this point, unfortunately, but yeah. No, they, they uh, yeah. in South Africa, um, they don't give two shits about Omicron. Uh, you have to wear your mask outside, but you know, that's about it. They don't give a fuck about anything else. It was yeah. so nice being there. You know, it's just like, just, it kind of felt like, like a return to, to how life used to be. Um, I, I yeah. just, like I said, I, I I loved it and it makes me more and more resentful about what the governments are doing because I mean, Omicron, if you look at the death rate versus the infection rate, yes, it's highly infection, but I mean, it's, it's like a, most people are experiencing it like a bad cold. That's right. Yeah. You know, so from now on, when any, when anyone sneezes, mm -hmm. we're going to, uh, you know, we're going to shut down everything. I just think it's ridiculous. Yeah. I don't think we'll be going into a lockdown again, but um, certainly they've imposed further, you know, they've brought back restrictions, particularly in venues and pubs and all those places that we like to go and where live music thrives. Yeah, um, yeah it's crippled it again, which is such a shame. It's a shame for for the for the venues too, because, you know, the venues are going to, 
I mean, they, there's only so long that they can survive financially. That's right. Yeah, it's um, a real worry. Big yeah. worry. Okay, so we are up to, I think, number 14 now. Um, and uh, this was my fav- one of my favorite debuts of the year, uh, Bizarre Cult. Um, the album is called Vi Overlefter. Um, I had uh, the, uh, the main man of uh, Bizarre Cult on the podcast as well, uh, talking about the record. And, you know, it was, it was interesting hearing, you know, how... Um, you know how personal this was to him uh you know and how long this record had taken to uh, pull together but you know when you l- listen to the, the the record it certainly doesn't sound like uh you know somebody who's just been doing this for five minutes uh you know mm. it, it it sounds like the work of someone who's you know pretty seasoned in the scene uh you know but which which makes it even more impressive as a as a debut but you know it is very strongly norwegian influenced um second wave black metal Mm. performed exceedingly well uh you know with songs that are all really beautifully self-contained you know everything on the record sounds different uh it doesn't sound like you're just listening to one kind of continuous ramble um yeah. you know the riffs are fucking cool that you know there's so many memorable moments on the record uh i i just i love this and you know generally speaking when it comes to like i said to you earlier it was difficult to narrow down the list this year to 40 let alone 20 yeah. so one of the key criteria that i always have then is okay what do i automatically go back to frequently mm. um you know and for a, a pretty substantial period when this album had come out i mean it was kind of almost a, a default you know i would if i if i'm busy working and i'm stuck for something to listen to then i'll just go oh, okay fuck it i'm back back to bizarre cult yeah um so based on based upon frequency based upon how impressed i am that this is uh the the project's first record um i uh i i had to include this on my list uh i think this is absolutely top notch yeah this was a really um powerful listen for me the composition was just so impressive and did you say he was a solo project no well i think i think he had written everything himself uh, okay. but he did ha- he did have some musicians playing with him Oh, because I was going to say, massive sound. Um, yeah, great album. That one I completely missed this year. So, um, again, it's another one on your list that I've grabbed and I'm listening to, which is great. This is why I love doing this, because I'm discovering more music, which is what it's all about. Yeah. Uh, so number 13, um, I have uh, Withered with an album called Fuluren. Uh This came out on the Season of Mist Underground Activists imprint. Uh, I must confess, uh, I, I wasn't usually familiar with anything that uh, Withered had done prior to this. I uh, obviously did mm. get into uh, the other records after I listened to this album. Um, but I had um, uh, Mike Thompson, who's the guitarist and vocalist on the on the record, talking about it. And it was cool hearing, you know, one, his love for metal, but also his love for the kind of metal that I like. And even though this is sort of a, you know, this is another black and death metal uh, band for the most part, you very quickly start hearing uh, influences of stuff like Neurosis, Crowbar, um, you know, even Mastodon on on, on the album. Yeah, uh, it's yeah. just a fucking dense, unique, um, just crazy record. Um, you know, and I, I'm I'm surprised this album didn't get a lot more attention than it did because I think, mm-hmm. you know, in a in a in a, in a sea of bands that don't necessarily sound the same, um, but you know. Uh, Bands that can maybe maybe be more easily pigeonholed into a specific kind of genre, you know. I think Withered is a very unique proposition. Um, and, oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, as I said, I think Fluorin is 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 you know a phenomenal record, and I'm very very pleased to have discovered them through this because the rest of their cat- back catalogue is great too. Yeah, this album was a pretty innovative listen for me, and I, I have to say I enjoyed the cleans on this album as well when they. Mm. Um, raised and uh, yeah I don't know what's happening to me but I did enjoy I did enjoy <laughs> this say, album getting getting lot. softer yeah. in your old age but it's it's a <laughs> never, the, I mean the clean never. vocals on this uh on this record what makes it cool too it it sort of still has a gruffness to it um Definitely. you know which, yeah. which speaks back to the uh, uh you know I, you know his love for stuff like crowbar um mm. but, you know I, and I can I can take clean vocals when it has the gruffness to it there's very few people that can do something that's maybe a little more polished and get away with it. I think I think one of the few men that 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 does that very well is Sam Loins of uh, Antichrist Imperium and, and Voices, but it's mm. yeah, it's because it's Sam. So, uh, but uh, yeah, I, phenomenal record. Uh, so then we move on to uh, my number twelve, uh, and uh, the record is Serpents of Old uh, by a project called Duitsvanger. This is off Debe- or this is put out by Debe Memorti Productions. 
uh, the second record uh, by Dortzfanger. And Dortzfanger, if you don't know, features uh, members of uh, Norjevil, um, you know, and a bunch of other, uh, you know, badass, grim, underground black metal bands. Uh, so it should come as no surprise that Serpents of Old is uh, nine tracks worth of grim, badass, necro, unrelenting black metal uh, that is uh, <laughs> that speaks to an unhealthy preoccupation with Satan. <laughs> but it's it's fucking awesome. It's it's exactly of the quality that you know Debra Mamorty is famous for. I mean, mm. I talk so much about that label, but. I mean, they are, you know, along with Season of Mist, one of the labels that if I see the, if I see they, they are putting out something, I'm immediately interested because nine out of ten times it's going to be fucking great, and this album is a good example of that. Yeah, don't know how I missed this one, but this was huge. Just so, like you say, just pure aggressive, uh, impressive and aggressive black metal. It was excellent. Yeah, I would definitely say as well, uh, Dutz Admiral, the uh, the vocalist. I think this is a a, a a career best for him. I mean, he's I like I like his voice in uh, Norjevil, um, mm. but like the amount of kind of power and aggression that he he managed to inject into this is is just awesome. It's huge. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna whack out a track here as well um, because I think if you haven't heard this yet, you most certainly need um, you know you need to hear it right now, and you straight after this podcast need to go check it out whilst uh, Kelly goes out and listens to Exuvia by Ruins of Everest. Um, but uh, this is a a track called "As the Rivers Bleed Their Blessings."
And that then brings me to uh, 11 before I'm going to take a pause for the cause and continue my top 10 next week. Um, and unsurprisingly, because I spoke about it uh, so much with you earlier, Lucifer, the broken seal, very <laughs> easily could have been higher up on the list. But um, I mean, my top 10 this year was so fucking difficult to to finally mm. decide on. I mean, I at one point had an Excel spreadsheet going with like oh, God. different different categories <laughs> like production, songwriting, oh, uh, long, lost ability. And then I like I, I started rating them out of 100 and then worked out averages and stuff. I was like, I, I was having like scientific formulas to figure out, OK, how do I pro- possibly do this? But uh, oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, Lucifer, we've spoken about it already. Fucking absolute badass band, badass album. album. Um, and uh, I mean, if they're not on your list, you know, you either miss <laughs> either 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 miss them or uh, you uh, are an as I lay dying fan, um, as I as I lay crying. So, <laughs> um, Awesome, but that is uh, that is that, uh, or the first part, or the first installment of my um, uh, of, of my top 20 of 2021 extravaganza wrapped up thank you so much for coming on the podcast ma'am and the great great talking to you again thank you for having me jack and it was awesome to talk to you too and we'll catch up again soon yeah definitely we need to do a, a, a full-on you know bullshitting episode that would be great. Uh, in uh in a couple of a uh, couple of months time yeah um, i would but- uh, definitely love to do that in the meantime, so you got holiday coming up and then when's the first um or when's the next slaves to the underground episode coming out so that'll be coming up around the 15th of February. All right. Close okay. to that. So yeah. I was about just, say, just having... in time for Valentine's Day. <laughs> huddle, yeah. huddle around with your lover and listen to uh, Grim Black Metal. <laughs> You're giving me ideas here. <laughs> do some sort of parody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. I was thinking this year, what what could I do for um for April Fools? Um I, I will I will think of something on that. Yes. Um on that uh, satirical Facebook page that I, I showed you some stuff of, I, I once did a I, I once did a a post where I I posted a um, a picture of a tombstone and uh, I put in the the Facebook page's name, and then I said you know I've decided after you know uh, what's I'm thinking about it for or reflecting upon it for a long time that I'm gonna stop the page and I'm gonna turn over a new leaf and then I left open a load of space and then it's like wrong I will never. <laughs> Shut this page down. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I'll sad. need to think of something. Need to think of something for the podcast. But anyway, like I said, great talking to you again. Take care of yourself. Um, and uh, I'm going to hopefully at some point, it'll, it won't be this year, but it'll be early next year, maybe. Uh, I'm going to be in Australia because my, my, my best mate's moving to Australia. So, oh, fantastic. Uh, well, we will make sure we have a beer. Yeah, no, for sure. I'm good. There's a lot of people that I'd love to see in person when I'm there. So, uh, for sure, yeah, definitely, definitely want to. Uh, look up uh, Dave and look up Matt and um, Matt Matt Wilcock and um, you know Sam Bean and and and, and those those men. Um, but yeah, no, for sure. Hopefully, like I said, I'll, I'll see you in person at some point. That sounds great. Look forward to it, Jackie. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Take care. Bye. Bye.
The track is Black Beneath the Sun, uh, the band is Lucifer, and the record is A Broken Seal, endorsed by both Kelly T and myself, um, so you know it's good. Um, do go and check that out. Uh, it is available on Dark Descent Records, um, and uh, thank you once again to uh, Kelly for coming on the podcast. Great catching up with her. Do go and check out Slave to the Underground. It is an absolutely top-notch podcast, especially if you like the uh, the raucous stuff that she's into. Uh, I mean, she is as, as real as it gets when it comes to uh, devotion to the cult. Um, but yeah, great having her on, and I'll definitely have her on again at some point this year. But I just wanted to, to reiterate very quickly, uh, my number's 20 down to 11. And there's a reason that I'm doing this, because as I was editing that conversation, I realized that uh, in my excitement to talk about uh, or to get through everything, I, uh, I may have missed out one band. So uh, I'll highlight that in a second. But anyway, uh, at number 20, Fredens Doll, Silence is Eternal. Uh, at number 19, Exodus, Persona Non Grata. Uh, at number 18, Grave Miasma, Abyss of Wrathful Deities. And then the one that I uh, foolishly left out uh, at number 17, Der Weg Einer Freiheit Nocturne. Uh, my apologies to Der Weg Einer Freiheit, but then again, you did make it onto one of the most illustrious and prestigious uh, best of lists of, uh, of the year. So um, congratulations are in order, I believe. Um, and also... Uh, yeah, like I said, if uh, if you guys haven't checked out that record yet, make sure that you do. It's on this list for a reason. My apologies to the band for uh, for leaving them out of the discussion. Um, at number 16, Funeral Winds, uh, Grusel Lamenten. Uh, at number 15, Spire, Temple of Kronos. At number 14, Bizarre Cult, Vi Overlevda. Uh, at number 13, Withered, with a re uh, record called Verloren. Uh, and then at number 13, oh, sorry, at number uh, 12, Duitsvanger, Serpents of Old, and at number 11, Lucifer, The Broken Seal. So next week, I am back with uh, Mike of Tombs, uh, the Everything Went Black uh, and Necromaniacs podcasts, and we're going to do our uh, collective top tens. So that was a really fun conversation. It's already in the bank as well. And then the week after, uh, as I said, I am going to be uh, talking with Shane Embry. Uh, and again, that is one that I've been looking forward to for a very long time. So uh, I think you guys are going to have a blast listening to that one as well. Um, but uh, for now, uh, right before we wrap up, uh, let's head over to uh, the... Let's start with Metal Storm, and then we'll head over to the Democrats Guide to Rock Music, Blabbermouth, straight after, uh, and talk some shit. So first up, uh, we see that Ale Storm uh, enter the studio and extend their deal with Napalm Records. Uh, the picture there is Ale Storm dressed in questionably, questionably matching uh, attire um, and uh, posing at that most metal of, uh, of imagery, uh, somebody's private swimming pool. Um, speaking of swimming pools, uh, just to let all of you know, I had a fucking blast when I was on holiday. Uh, two weeks, I wish it was four as originally planned, but uh, that'll happen next year. Um, but uh, yeah, I had an absolutely awesome time. Uh, things in South Africa are uh, are a hell of a lot different to what they are over here in the UK. Um, you know, they they kind of want you to still wear a mask. Um, I think I may have mentioned this to Kelly as well, but they kind of want you to wear a mask when you're uh, outside. I uh, eventually started ignoring that, but for the most part, they don't give a shit about Omicron, uh, and life kind of carries on as normal. Um, you know, I not that I'm completely opposed to electric cars, but as an example. We didn't see for the entirety of our trip there a single electric charging point. Uh, we didn't see an electric car. It kind of feels to me like you can still be a free man there away from the clutches of uh, the uh, the medical bureaucrats and the Green New Deal. And I know, you know, their lockdown was pretty draconian when it was in force. Hopefully, uh, you know, they've kind of learned their lesson from that. But yeah, I just uh, it kind of felt like for the two weeks that I was there, it's like a taste of the way life was uh, and the way that life should be. Um, but uh, we'll definitely be making this an annual trek if uh, if, if, if we can help it. Um, and uh, I would recommend it very, very highly to anybody who is into eating meat, uh, drinking great wine, seeing beautiful, uh, beautiful, being surrounded by beautiful scenery. Um, and, uh, you know, just if you're if you're into nature and you're in, if you're into the finer things in life, uh, South Africa, in, in my opinion, is a place that uh, few can beat. And, you know. Uh, at the risk of sounding like I'm getting a little too sentimental, I did um, a post on my personal um, uh, social medias about this, uh, just a picture of a spot that I was at at the time, and I said, you know, no matter where I end up, I've, you know, as of uh, February the 14th, I will have lived in the UK for 20 years. 
Uh, but South Africa will always be the land that I love. Uh, moving on, uh, Impaled Nazarene, guitarist quits. Uh, shocking news. Uh, no doubt he has quit because of the uh, black metal sketch list that's been, uh, that's been floating around. Uh, one of the, uh, the Into the Necrosphere legions uh, shared this with me. Um, I have no idea where people got the time to pull this fucking pile of shit together, but it's basically a, a who's who of great bands. <laughs> Who get rated by whether they are uh, safe, minor sketch, major sketch, or Nazi. Uh, and Impaled Nazarene were bla- were branded Nazis, even though, I mean, as far as I know, there's absolutely nothing connecting them with Nazis whatsoever. And I can only assume that uh, Tommy Ulgren was so uh, upset when he heard the news that he immediately decided that he has had it with Impaled Nazarene and quit. Uh, either way, uh, I didn't include them in my top 20 of, uh, of last year, but I will say this. If we did a countdown of greatest intros of, uh, of the last year, uh, the intro to, uh, to their last record is not only the greatest intro of the last year, but the greatest intro of the last decade. Uh, it is absolutely fucking brilliant. And it's a fun album. I mean, it's not gonna, it's not, it wasn't going to make my top 10, or sorry, top 20 probably ever, but it's a fun record. Um, let's move on. Uh, nothing much immediately grabbing my attention, unless uh, I uh, were to talk about Striper announcing new shows. Hurrah! Wasp are working on new material. It says, yeah, it's been almost seven years since Wasp, uh, who had just recently announced a 40th anniversary world tour, released their most recent studio album of all new original material. Golgotha, not counting 2018's re-idolized the soundtrack to the Crimson Idol. Both were absolutely terrible in my opinion. Um, the soundtrack to the Crimson Idol, it goes on to say, was a re-recording of their classic 1992 album, The Crimson Idol, which I did like. I uh, didn't like the re-recording, but I really like uh, The Crimson Idol, and featured some previously unreleased tracks. Uh, recently, however, frontman Blackie Lawless told Eddie Drunk that the band has been working on an album's worth of material. I don't expect very much from it uh, i think blackie's day has passed him by and unfortunately blackie is one of those guys that i think unless uh, he's surrounded by women of ill repute uh, copious amounts of drugs and booze um, i don't know if the man is capable of releasing anything decent uh, this new clean-cut christian blackie maybe maybe easier on his liver but it's uh, not easier on my ears um Moving on, uh, Falls of Ruros reveal details for next full-length effort. The Falls of Ruros have the pleasure of announcing their sixth full-length installment, Key to a Vanishing Future, due out on March 25th, 2022, in collaboration with Gilead Media and Eisenwald. Generally speaking, if Eisenwald are in a uh, are, are involved in anything, I'm already interested. So. Definitely something that I'll check out. The six-piece music output was tracked by Fall of Ruros in Portland, Maine. Fortunately, not Portland, Oregon. No offense to anyone who lives in Portland, Oregon. Between May 2020 and January 2021, mixed and mastered by Colin Marston at the Thousand Caves in Queens, New York, uh, alongside Unveiled Details. Give a listen to the album's opening track, Clarity. I have not done so yet, but I will definitely do so. I am looking forward to a fuck of a lot of stuff uh, over the course of the next 12 months, though. So number one on my list of uh, records that i'm looking out uh, or looking forward to uh the new antichrist imperium or the forthcoming antichrist imperium uh i know there's uh been a number of werewolves records uh, already in the offing so that album i'm really looking forward to um and then possibly a new acrococca record um i know sam uh, when he was on the podcast sam loins had hinted that uh, work was well underway on that um and i think he even Back when I had Jason on the podcast, he spoke about some of the new music and that it was, you know, quite riff orientated. Um, I hope that it is Satan orientated more so than the last record. But um, yeah, I, uh, I'm looking forward to that. And then uh, I would hope that Marduk are going to put out a new album this year. Um, you know, they certainly have uh, they, they've had the bar set very, very high for them with this new um, uh, Funeral Mist record. So uh, they should hopefully put out something. Uh, Matt Pike has got the solo project of his, um, 
which I, God knows why he's calling it anything other than High on Fire because it sounds exactly like High on Fire, but I'm looking forward to that. Looking forward to the new Crowbar. Um, i trying to think what else is coming out that uh, that I'm excited about. I'm, I'm sure things will, will come to mind, but um, yeah. Oh, yes, the new um, the new Immortal. Um, or not New Immortal, sorry, New Immolation. And as far as Immortal is concerned, Abath has put out a new, uh, a new record. Um, I actually have the promo of that, but I've not had a chance to listen to the whole thing yet. That re- or the, the single that he's put out, um, I thought it was actually fucking good. Uh, very surprised by it. Uh, one record, of course, that I won't give a shit about is Korn, who have unveiled the final single from their upcoming album. It's called Requiem. Why is it that so many bands have to kind of have one either song or album in their discography called Requiem? I just think it's... So incredibly lame. Uh, Night have premiered the track Asheron. Um, they they hail from San Francisco, which already bodes ill, in my opinion. Although, if you live in San Francisco, there's an awful lot to be pissed off about. Um, you know, between the junkies on the streets and uh, the uh, the gangs stealing from Right Aids and Walgreens. But uh, it says Black and Heavy Metal Outfit Night will be releasing their sophomore full-length Voices of the Cronian Moon on March 25th, 20, uh, 2022 via Season of Mist. The band have partnered with Metal Injection to premiere their brand new song and video, Asheron. Uh, the video was created by Guilherme Henriquez. Um, I will check this out because it's a Season of Mist band. Um, what I've heard so far, has it uh, has it done much for me i believe the answer to that question is probably no um but uh, i'll still check it out uh much like this new celeste record so celeste i i know someone named celeste so i have no fucking idea why anyone would name their band celeste but anyway uh are a, a french band they are about to put a record out on nuclear blast records called uh assassin uh, and have uh, released a new single, and I will no doubt be <laughs> insulting the entire nation of France when I try and pronounce this, uh, Le Cour Noir Charbon. Um, I did like the song, and I think the name Celeste is terrible. Uh, it's not as bad as Custard, but it's uh, it's pretty shit. Um, let's check out what else there is to talk about. Suffocation, North American Touring Plan Disclosed, hurrah. Uh, oh, actually, that reminds me. Another record I'm looking forward to uh, this year is the new Meshuggah. Um, they uh, put out about a 30-second clip on Instagram over the weekend, I saw, and uh, what I heard sounded fucking badass. Uh, Abath announced Dread Reaver album details disclosed. Dread Reaver is the title of the newly announced studio album from black metal formation Abath. Uh, the band's third long play will be officially released on March the 25th, 2022 through Season of Mist. Undoubtedly, they released it um, as a living tribute to me uh, because my 42nd birthday is on March the 27th. Uh, alongside unveiled details, Abath also premiere the first single, Dream Call. Um, I must say, I've not been hugely excited about any new abath music um for um for fair fair while now but uh maybe because i had no expectations whatsoever this song like i said earlier was really good um i uh, i thoroughly enjoyed it and uh i do have the full record i need to listen to it um but uh my my expectations have most definitely been raised um let's see what else there is to talk about agatha demon releasing seventh studio album in march don't really care about that um i don't think i'm gonna give it one more i'll give it one more page or one more skim through and then uh we'll move on to blabbermouth mystic circle belial is my name single unleashed this is coming out on atomic fire records and i don't know if anybody has noticed what's going on over there so I think I mentioned this last year, but uh, Marcus Steiger, who uh, was the founder of Nuclear Blast, sold Nuclear Blast, started Atomic Fire, which I mean, you, you can kind of see the connection in the names there. And he now seems to be on a mission to uh, steal every single band from Nuclear Blast. Uh, I saw that um, Agnostic Front is signed with them. Uh, Udo Dirk Schneider is signed uh, with them, which, you know, undoubtedly was his biggest coup. Uh, I know Meshuggah is signed to them. Uh, looks like Opeth has gone there. Um, so, um, yeah, some uh, some interesting stuff happening in uh, in that part or in in, uh, in Germany, in Dortmund, I think they were based out of, um, or Donsdorf. 
Uh, okay, let's move on to Blabbermouth. And I actually want to talk specifically about an incident that happened that hurt my heart, if I if I can if I can speak frankly. I mean, it it it, it, it actually it didn't just hurt my heart. It was like someone punched me right in the kidneys because it was watching somebody whose music I hold near and dear continue to make a fool of himself uh and uh embarrass himself or actually and live out his midlife crisis for all to see i can't find it yet so i'm just gonna i think you guys will know i'm talking about alex skolnick uh put out this fucking absolute load of wank uh called the big lie he's been dabbling in all this uh stupid rap music or pretend rap he thinks is very funny uh, it is just absolutely pathetic. So it says here, testaments. Of course, before I before I uh, start reading, uh, you know, naturally, everybody on Blabbermouth was absolutely creaming themselves at the idea and going on about how sharp he is. And uh, you know, you can even say, say see here by the um, by the uh, headline that uh, they described it as Skolnik taking down right wing echo chambers. Um, you know, let's. Let's ignore for a minute that uh, the you know fake election, rig election narrative has been a mainstay or a staple of both sides, the Democrats and the Republicans, for the last fucking several decades. Uh, you know, you need only go back to, uh, for a recent example, go back to uh, to two thousand, where uh, what's him. Uh, the Al Gore campaign, you know, complained and went all the way to the Supreme Court about the uh, votes in Florida. Felt that you know Bush, the, the Bush campaign, had stolen the election from them. Um, you know, there was the whole RussiaGate fiasco, which you know some idiots still believe is a is real, in spite of the fact that you know it, a lot of the people who were involved in that have now been arrested, and all of it has been proven to be untrue. But I mean, for four years they went on and on about how Trump is an illegitimate president and how. Uh, you know, the his, his uh, election was a coup, this, that, and the other. And this is not me taking sides one way or the other. But I, I, I think when people start to treat, uh, you know, what happened uh, in the last election cycle in America like it's some sort of fucking novelty, I mean, you, you really are out of touch with history. But as I said, you know, Skolnick is, uh, is a guy whose music I absolutely love, whose, um, you know, whose guitar playing I rate as some of the best on the face of the earth. Um, and as I said, it, it, it hurts my soul to see one of my musical heroes have this epic midlife meltdown that he's having at the moment. But it says, yeah, Hush Money, the rap duo featuring, featuring Scully D, the alter ego of uh, Testament guitarist Alex Skolnick, and Kimmy G, Kimmy Gordon, has released its first video, B-I-G-L-I-E, a take on the events that took place one year ago, January 6th, 2021. The big coup, which was a couple of hundred people uh, marching drunkenly in single file through the capital, uh, smoking weed and taking selfies, which apparently some fucking imbeciles uh, think uh, was enough to overthrow the entire country. But fortunately, our structures held fast. Um, you know, if you again, I, I've spoken before about this, um, you know, when it comes to principle, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, bear in mind, if you wanna if you wanna talk about attacks on the Capitol in 2020, uh, the uh, BLM protesters marched on the Capitol. They marched on the, the the White House to the point where they had to bring out I think 60 National Guard members uh, because they thought that uh, these folks were gonna you know break into the White House. At no point did anyone ever go well you know much like uh, computer games. As soon as they capture the flag in the White House, that's it. They've taken over the country. Um, you know, but for this nonsense, they act like it was, you know, the greatest, the, you know, the greatest threat to American democracy ever. As a matter of fact, um, in the theatrics that followed the uh, January 6th memorial um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Kamala Harris said that uh, she, or she first likened it to Pearl Harbor, in which two and a half thousand American uh, servicemen and women were killed, not to mention the fact that it launched uh, America's physical involvement in the Second World War. Then she compared it to 9-11, once again, 3,000 people killed versus the one person shot on January the 6th. Um, and uh, after 
after that, uh, Joe Biden proceeded to say that it was the worst thing that had happened to America since the Civil War. Uh, and as a matter of fact, he implied that it may even have been worse than the Civil War. The Civil War, incidentally, which claimed the lives of 600,000 and had a battle line that ran all the way, for those of you that are history scholars, from uh, Washington down to Texas. But um, I think, you know, if you go back to my Exodus interview uh, that I did with Jack Gibson, the one thing that he said that is absolutely true, and I've seen it now for, uh, for my own self, is that when it comes to the Republicans and the Democrats, they're, they're, they're both shit apples of the same tree. The difference is the Democrats, I think because they have so much more um, uh, support in Hollywood, they, they, they just get the pageantry and they get the, uh, the theatrics a little bit more so than the, than the Republicans. And, and this January 6th fiasco was a, was a great example of that. I mean, they even had the fucking cast of Hamilton <laughs> come up and do a musical number. And clearly they missed a trick because uh, as much as uh, the cast of Hamilton may have, uh, you know, won over the hearts and minds of, uh, you know, the upper middle class voters in their base, it would have been Scully D and Hush Money that would have gotten the rest of America to uh, finally see the B.I.G. L.I.E. for what it was. Uh, but anyway, it says here, directed by Frankie Fuleda, B.I.G. L.I.E. was shot guerrilla style in july 2021 at the fox news hq times square in washington square park and is said to be as much a tribute to new york its resilience and ever-present wackiness as it is a takedown of nationwide right-wing echo chambers resilience to what exactly as far as the right wing is concerned because as far as i can tell uh the greatest resilience new york has had to show has been against fucking bill de blasio possibly one of the worst mayors in the history of american politics maybe outside of lori lightfoot um and uh what's his face london breed in san francisco um what else does it say in a t-shirt emblazoned with the oversized logo of the influential run dmc which naturally gives uh skolnick loads of uh of credibility scoli skewers fox news election denialism and insurrection revisionism because yes it was an insurrection the video also features comic j hype jonathan hippolyte and carl lake best known as robot guy from Chappelle's show hot tip alex kimmy and the video director once performed on the maori show under the name vicious dna uh, i think the the thing about um stupid fucking videos like this and the rest of the bull mash that uh we see on um or permeating through the music industry and permeating through the entertainment industry is, you know, we're still going to see a hell of a lot of it this year. I suspect the uh, the woke movement is in its last throes, but, uh, you know, it's like a snake. When you chop the tail off, most people will tell you the snake is much more dangerous uh, than it was when it was just uh, sailing through the tall grasses. Um, and you, you can see it in the way that people, you know, are, are trying to make a career, for example, out of going after Joe Rogan. I, I I don't understand what the what this fascination is with with running down the guy. I mean, I'm pretty open. I, I like him. I like his style. You know, this podcast was you know based very much on his approach to uh, to podcasting. You know, but I kind of giving it give it a metal slant. And you know, I, I tend to when I speak to anybody, as all of you know, I I'll kind of feel them out to see what they actually want to talk about. You know, if someone wants to talk politics, we'll talk politics. If they want to talk about music, that's all we'll talk about. But you know, I don't try and force anybody down down a particular track. But I mean, the, the, the backlash to Joe Rogan with people from Spotify crying and demanding that he be taken down and, you know, people basing entire podcasts and entire fucking YouTube videos on how terrible he is. Here's a, a solution. Just don't watch him. I can't stand the sight of Joy Reid. I hate Rachel Maddow. Um, I, I don't like basically anyone on MSNBC or, or CNN. I don't sit here go. You know, I might throw a couple of uh, you know, <laughs> I might, might throw a couple of insults their way. I might throw some shade their way. I don't sit here and go. They need to be banned off television for the good of America and the good of the world. But, uh, yeah, like I said, Joe Rogan's one of those people. Jordan Peterson is another one. I saw that fucking fat slob, uh, Ethan Klein, who does, I think, the H3 podcast. Uh, you know, first he had some sort of gripe with uh, with Joe Rogan in which he posted this picture of himself 
slimed all over the camera lens because <laughs> that's the only thing I can the only way I can describe his body um, and then uh, after after his takedown of Joe Rogan he was off to the races trying to take down Jordan Peterson uh, anyways fucking morons uh, only thing we can do is to insulate ourselves against this dumb shit talk to people about stuff that we agree on or that we would agree on as opposed to trying to pick fucking arguments with people and like i said remember the world's going to become a wacky place in 2022 if i had to make one prediction it's that uh you know if we think we've seen some crazy shit uh we've seen nothing yet uh let me wrap up with one final news story uh on blabbermouth and then uh i'm out of here ex fear factory frontman burton c bell on his singing style it's all about vocalizing for feeling and vocalizing a moment uh i would have liked to have vocalized a moment when he saw that his royal ch royalty checks from fear factory had uh, dwindled down to nothing because old dino had pulled a swindle on him um on that note uh, i am done with the news for this week it also brings me to the end of another episode of Into the Necrosphere. As I said, my first for 2022. I hope that uh, you guys had a blast listening to that because uh, uh, it feels good to be back. Uh, and uh, I, like I said at the top of the show, I've got a lot of cool stuff coming uh, this year, uh, which I'm very, very excited about. Um, I really want, there's a couple of th goals that I have for this year. Goal number one is I want to do my first in-person podcast. I think, you know, now that things are kind of going back to normal, I may invest in, in, in some um, in some gear that I can take with me on the road. Um, there's uh, one man in particular, uh, some of you will know, David Gray of, uh, of Akrakoko, who has agreed to be on the show, but he wants to do it in person. So I'm going to need to figure out a way to make that happen. Um, I may, may, might even do one on the road, um, you know, now that we can move around again, uh, you know, if I can, uh, you know, go over to a festival festival or head over yeah there and everywhere who knows who i might meet um and then there's a couple of names that i've got on the list as well people that i'd like to get on and there's you know some of the old favorites will be making a return i'll definitely be getting evan uh on to talk about uh the new quell record uh alan avril and i'll have a uh a round three without a shadow of a doubt uh, uh katie irizari will be back on the podcast um so yeah great things coming in 2022 but you know for me to you uh i hope that you have a fucking great year ahead of you um and uh, i hope that i'm going to get to meet some of you guys in person this year as well be that at a show or i don't know turning up at a bar and just saying you know if any of you motherfuckers are in dublin or london or wherever i happen to be uh you know get your asses over uh to this place and uh, i'll buy you all a round of drinks um but thanks for listening to the show hope you guys enjoyed that i'm going to play out uh with another of kelly's picks um this is a record that uh, again i probably didn't pay as much attention to as i should have when it came out but it is really good i think you guys should check it out if you haven't done so already um this is gallows off the record 66 black wings the song i am finishing off uh, this episode with is root twisted in sixes i'll see all of you bad motherfuckers again next week <laughs> Right.
Hey!